Okay. Um, for me, it all started in a... I come from a very small town in New Jersey. It would be like, you know, uh, coming from like... It, it wasn't far from New York City. So me and my friends, we would go get as much money as we possibly could get together, get on the subway and go into New York and listen to music. And you used to be able to, for five do American dollars, you could stand on a rock in Central Park and listen to, it was called the Schaefer Concerts. There was a beer called Schaefer, right? And we were about 16, 17 years old. And I saw Led Zeppelin. I saw Ike and Tina Turner. I saw Jeff Beck with Truth. I saw a uh, Love and Spoonful. And, you know, when I mean, you have to remember, like this, they changed your life. These records were life-changing records. And very, you know, and you were always like, how am I ever going to be this good? You know, how am I going to be like that? Oh, my God, these groups are so big, you know. So, um, you know, I was in bands, and we were in garages, and we were playing, and we'd do parties, and pizza places, and, uh, you know, wherever we could play, you know. And everybody stopped doing it but me. I kept going. <laughs> Benny, it's it's funny that you mention him because we're doing a memorial for him. He died this year. Benny Benny passed away from Parkinson's, and today I you know and for the last couple of days I'm I have to speak at a memorial. And I don't know about you, but whenever you have to do that for a friend, it's hard. It's really hard. We knew it for a very very long time, and we were connected by this song into the night. And Benny was the kind of guy, man, Benny was rock and roll, okay? He was a southern boy from the south, from the south. He was from Savage, Maryland, okay? And he had so much energy, and he sang with so much power. And, um, you know, uh, I met him in New York City back in the late 70s, and we got together, and we wrote three songs. We wrote Might Have Been Love, Too Young, and into the night, and all three songs went on his went on his album, and I was playing bass. But I got a real rock and roll. And I always say that was my rock and roll uh, college, right? The University of Rock and Roll. <clears throat> and we toured, and we played in we played in Syracuse. We played all over the country. We did Dick Clark on TV. We did TV shows. We did Merv Griffin. And Benny was a one-of-a-kind man. He just had one of those voices that people loved. And that song was a huge hit, huge hit for him. Okay. Um, it's so funny because... Um, when, when you when you do music for a living, nobody thinks, you know, no, I have a big family, okay? I have five yeah. boys. I have five grandchildren. I'm old. I just, you know, I'm an older guy. But I still write all the time. I still write all the time. And how I keep myself motivated is by just there's always something to write about. You know, there's always something to, that I need to say. And, um, you know, as long as my voice holds up, I'm going to keep making records, you know. And so far, I mean, it's a little tired tonight, but so far it's been okay, you know. But the motivation, it's like people think when you do music for a living, like you don't have a real job, you know. <laughs> you know, and so, so here's the thing. I'm not complaining, but um, I write the songs. Now I have a studio. I write it. I write the lyrics. I record it, I play all the instruments, I mix it. It's a lot of work, you know. So if I'm going to finish something, I have to really love it, you know. So here's what happened. Um, 
Stallone is doing this movie, and my record company, Scotty Brothers, he has a meeting with them, and they play him. I mean, I they always wanted me to say I wrote the song for them, for this. But the song was on my record, okay? The song had been completed a long time before. But Stallone was looking for music for Rocky IV. And nobody was calling me and saying, hey, Robert, is it okay if we... No, 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 no. They had a meeting with him. He heard it and flipped out, man. I mean, he just loved that song. He came down to the studio, and he hung out with me for a while. And the night of the opening of the movie, I was sitting at a table with him, Rob Lowe, uh, uh, what's her name, the girl, the Swedish girl he was going out with, uh, um, I'm spacing on, you know, and um, he was always very good to me, very nice to me, a good person, man. Angel of the City, you know, we had great success with No Easy Way Out, right? People loved it, you know. Cobra was more, I remember when Cobra came out, it did well, but not as good as Rocky Ford did. You know what I mean? It was, it, was, uh, it was a little different, you know. He took it, again, he made a, like a montage, right? Her photos and stuff like that. And I would say it's more of a cult movie right now, you know. Like people, people love that movie. If you love Stallone, you love that movie, you know. And um, so... Again, it was just he really enjoyed me as an artist, and I was very lucky to be involved in two of his movies, because um, I don't know if your if your fans know this, but I think in November there's going to be another uh, like a an, a uh, director's cut of Rocky IV. It's like the 35 year anniversary or 36 year anniversary of Rocky IV. So it'll be a new a new film coming out in America here which I'm sure we'll get to India and get all over the world, but there's going to be another one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, you know, Co yes, I agree with you. Yeah, absolutely. The moon, he, you know what? You got to give him credit. He was very good. Until he did that one, Rocky Five. I didn't like the music to Rocky Five. I was not a fan of that. But everything up to there, he was pretty good at picking the music. He really was, you know. And, uh, yeah. And and Cobra, Cobra had some cool stuff in it, you know. And I think they're thinking of doing a new Cobra also, I heard somewhere. But I live in Hollywood. I hear a lot of things, you know. <laughs> Modern Madness, I was a little mad, okay, in my brain. Um, very uh, disjointed record for me. Um, the songs I didn't think were as good. Um, it was, uh, I did it at, at the studio in Burbank. It was kind of, it was a hard time in my life, you know, and I was trying to keep it together and finish this record. And I didn't think I did a very good job, you know. I mean, some of those songs are okay, and I perform them live. But for the most part, I, I think personally that better than the rest, the new one is would have been a better follow-up to the first one, you know. Uh, you know, I've always been a big fan of his. It could have been, you know, uh, I still listen to an amazing, I still listen to Brian Adams still. I just think that voice is amazing. I mean, when cuts like a knife came out, I was like, wow, this guy is so good. And, um, I don't know if, uh, fighting for you was inspired by him. Maybe, um, I mean, look, it's popular music, you know, um, everything seeps in, you know what I mean? And, and I am a big fan of people, you know what I mean? If I listen I, to this day, I mean, I was driving home from the mountains the other day and I put on Tom Petty. Okay. You know, on Pandora. I put Pandora on, I put on Tom Petty. I mean, you know, if you listen to my, like someone's asking me about new life story here, you know what I mean? Tom Petty, like when I do my singer-songwriter stuff, 
Tom Petty was a huge influence on me, you know? Um, and I just, I really admire his career and I love his writing, you know? And it, like, it, I'm still driven to write uh, songs, you know what I mean? And it's like, Fighting For You was like, um, it was probably one of the best songs on the record. The duet, you know, was, was cool with, uh, with her. And um, I, I perform it live and it's so fun, you know. You know, I am I am really pleased to be part of the conversation because I really, even to this day, music moves me. I mean, I know it sounds cliche when it's, oh, music moves me. It's who I am. It's my life. But what people don't realize is like when you start and you're listening to the Kinks and the Beatles and Motown and Otis Redding and Sam and Dave, I mean, Aretha Franklin, um, you know, uh, I, I was so blessed to come up in an, er in an era where music took us not only from, gave us joy through our ears, but opened up a new life, you know? It was such an important part of my whole life. I don't have, you know, and and when I listen, when I listen to these things, it's, it's still so important and to feel like, oh my gosh, I'm part of that. I get to be part of that. I'm honored. I'm humbled by that because I don't feel worthy. You know, those people, you know, um, what was I hearing? I was, you know how you put TikTok on every now and then and there's Aretha Franklin singing, looking out on the morning rain. I used to inspire it. and you go, Holy God, that is that is so good, you know, because you make me feel that she goes on and, you know, it's just there's so much great stuff, you know, and with all the craziness in the world, this is the only place I can go and, and escape, you know, and feel like there's some hope, you know. But Stallone, no, 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 no. That my friend once had a uh, T-shirt that said, "Movie stars are, don't make good friends." <laughs> if he saw me, he would probably be very nice to me. But we don't hang out, you know. Um, I don't know. Maybe when the Rocky Four movie comes out, maybe I'll get invited to the premiere, and maybe I'll see him then. That's only in November. I think I'll be around in November for sure, you know. No, I, I don't, I haven't, um, I haven't collaborated with him at all. Um, I, I don't know who started that rumor, but somebody stopped me and know it's Jim Carrey. I, you know, I'm in LA a bit more. I used to see him around, but we never really spoke and no, no path, no, no, uh, no nothing there. I, I personally think that on my new record, when I, uh, Better Than the Rest, I used a lot of very modern synths and loop production yeah. ideas. See, you asked me what keeps me going, what keeps me inspired. It's, you know, music is, is absolutely using a different uh, color palette. You know, I mean, you can go in and you could cut an album like, let's say, um, you know, Eric Clapton did with bass and drums couple of guitars and that but the the more modern music is using more of the new colors of what's going on and it's very exciting i mean you know there's plugins for this plugins for that i really try to stay up on it all 
to the deniability, you know, because, you know, when you, when it's part of the production of the new music and it's refreshing and it's, it's great. I love it. I really love it. You know, and back then things, things, yes, was simpler, but a lot of that music was, was they were bringing like um, a lot of synthesizers with big guitars. That's the 80s sound. But a lot of those old synth sounds are now coming back and you hear it in dance music, in, in you know, in, in trance and you hear it in, in club music, you know, all those synths, you know, and, and big guitars. I still think it's effective. And I'm very excited. It excites me. You know, I, I like it. You know, I try to incorporate it as much as I can. It's, it's, it's everything, okay? Because the thing is, you know, you, you, when you write a song and you start hearing that song in your brain and you start realizing that this is how I want it to sound, this is the direction, and with surprises, there's surprises, but the mixing of it is so creative now and, and, and mastering should only make it better. If it doesn't make it better, then the guy who mastered it for you did a bad job or your mix sucks, okay? Either, either one, okay? So it's very important. I mean, sometimes a song comes together for me, not sometimes, almost all the time. When I, when I make the record and I feel all the parts are working well together, that's, that makes me happy. That makes, it's, it's, it's key. It's so important to mix it well, master it well. It is, especially today, you know, because we're all working in our bedrooms and our garages and, you know, it's important. You know, right now, I would have to say the one I'm most proud of right now, and I don't know if people know it so well, but time just this time off better than the rest, I think is some of my best writing right now. I think that comes from, for instance, I just released a song with a guy named Marty Punch that's called You Better Be Strong, right? And it's very motivational. It's very motivational. I, I think writing motivational songs are a part of I, th I think people need them, you know? I, people want to hear that, you know? Uh, there's tons in pop music, you know? There's t tons of those kind of songs. And if it's very organic, you know, Marty Punch was, a, you know, he's he's a uh, artist from Germany and a very good friend of mine. He asked me if I would sing this song and it was, it's called Better Be Strong. And it is very motivational, it is. So here's the thing. So for a while, I, it always used to really bug me that in my Wikipedia thing, it used to say who every, Robert Tepper. No, they didn't say Robert Tepper. Robert Tepper, whose real name is, uh, I don't know, it was some, uh, El Nombre de Español, okay? It was like uh, Roberto de Pardo or something. I was born in New Jersey, okay? <laughs> That's not, my name is Robert Tepper. I never changed it. That, that's that's what it was. But for me, for a, a bunch of years there, after I put out a couple, after I put out um, No Rest for the Wounded, I really got into engineering, okay, and producing. So I was, I was more on the technical side. I was more helping people write. I was more putting songs together for people. I was more recording and mixing. And, you know, kind of, I was really inspired to do that. So Wikipedia used to put, Robert Tepperd, who who every now and then puts out some songs, okay? So now I put out a record in 2019. I put out, no, I put out New Life Story in 212, 219 better than the rest, and the new record's going to be called Shaking Like a Leaf on a Tree, <laughs> okay? It's, so I'm making up for lost time, you know? Right now, Michael Douglas... My son's book, Between the Records, Julian Tepper is a writer. Look it up. 
<laughs> I thought Moby was... I love tennis. That's my favorite game. I want to speak Spanish. You're going to you're going to think I'm just putting you on, okay? But my top foods are Italian, Indian, like cakes and like croissants and all that kind of stuff. I love I love dark chocolate. I love uh, all that kind of stuff, you know? But Indian food to me it's like one of the it's it's got such great spice to it, you know? It's got such great taste. I mean, I only eat Indian food in LA. I'm sure you have the really good stuff. <laughs> You know, um, I, I, I listen to some meditation music that's very influenced by Indian music. I can't say that really versed in it. I, I'd be a liar if I said I was very versed in it. I, I enjoy it when I see it in movies. You know, um, I think it's very enjoyable there. I, you know, um, but I, I don't know it. I don't know it enough. The movie I liked the most, the last movie I saw was Cruella, okay? Cru Cruella, it was the first time I went to a theater in over a year and a half. And I loved it, really good. The music was really cool. My favorite movie scene is the last scene in Pulp Fiction when they're in the diner. I can watch that every day of my life. The dialogue's amazing, and it's just so great. I love that. Pulp Fiction last scene the la the scene in the diner with uh, with uh, you know it's just so good it's so good it's so great that you're involved in your music don't let anybody tell you i saw this today uh, what's his name A very famous actor said today don't let anybody step on your dream everyone's going to tell you you can't you can't you can't you can't, but you can, you can. And if you're in process, doesn't matter if you have a hit on the radio, a hit in the movie, you keep doing your music, you never give up, you keep going, 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 and you never stop. And you, you only stop when you can't, okay? And there's no such thing. So that's my message. record is called shaking like a leaf on a tree it's i think it's 14 songs and um i'm really happy with the record i think it came out pretty cool and i'm already working on one after that already too <laughs> but that one's way that one needs a lot of work yet but um please look out i would say depending on how the business end of things go i would say probably september october okay and for all you fans who stay by me and give me a reason to keep going. I love that. Thank you so much. I can't thank you enough. This ain't it.